Hello, thank you for watching this video on slope. In this video, I'm going to review the formula to finding the slope of a line. And we'll be using the point slope formula, I'm sorry, the, the slope formula itself, and then using the ratio of rise over run. Now, reviewing the slope, you'll recall from your algebra one that the slope of a line is the change in y over the change in x, which means that you're subtracting the y2 minus the y1 and you're dividing that by the subtraction of x2 minus x1. Now, the other way that we're going to also identify this uh, slope, which again it is the steepness of the line, is to use this ratio of rise over run. Now, this rise over run ratio only works if we're provided a graph. Well, it works best, not only, but it works best when we're provided a graph of the line where we can count how many uh, units we go up and how many units we run down. I mean, run to the right. So let's look at the first example, and we're going to start by using the ratio of rise over run. On this first example here, to figure out the slope of the line, using I'm going to use the letter M to represent the slope. So M is going to represent the slope, and we're going to get the ratio of rise over run. Well, here, to go from this point A, to this point B, I'm simply going to draw a right triangle going vertically up to the height of where point B is and then running to the right. Now the way we're going to do this, we always want to get from point uh, from the point on the left to the point on the right. So in this case I would rise upwards and then go to the right. You can make a triangle going downwards, but it looks a little bit off because the ratio is rise over run. I want to look at that ratio at that number first, how many units I actually rise. So in this example, simply counting up one, two, three, four, we have a positive rise of four and one, two, three, four, five, and a positive one, two, three, four, five, and a positive run of five. So our slope is going to be a positive 4 divided by a positive 5. And that's our result. Our slope is 4 over 5. Now, like I said, if you decided to go in the other direction, let's say we decided to go from right to left. So from point B to point A, and we go down first, go to the downward height, to get to A and then go to the left. Well, by going down, we have a one, two, three, four, a negative rise because we're going downwards. That would be a negative rise. And one, two, three, four, five. Notice that those numbers are the same. But since we're going to the left, that would be a negative run because we're moving downwards, which would be negative, and to the left on a number line, which would also be negative and our slope would then be a negative 4 divided by a negative 5 which still is equal to 4 over 5. So if you made that mistake, and well not a mistake, but decided to go from point B to point A, you still end up with the same slope. You will just simply need to make sure again that you understand that because you're going from the right point to the left point, your rise is a negative direction, you're going downward, so that's indicated by a negative and moving to the left would also be indicated by negative. So you end up still with negative divided by negative, which is going to equal to 4 over 5. So moving on to the next example. On this example, again, we want to go from point P to point Q. And this one, again, I'm going to just simply do it from point the left point to the right point. So from the left point to the right point, I would go down and get, again, draw a right triangle by going straight down first and then moving to the right. So I went down one, two, three units. So that's going to be indicated with a negative three. And I'm moving one, two, three, four, five, six units to the right, which is indicated by a positive six. So the slope of our line, which is the ratio of rise over run, would equal to negative three divided by positive six. And on this case, you can actually simplify this. We didn't do this last time because it wasn't. we could not reduce it. We could divide both of these numbers by 2. They have a common factor of 3. I'm sorry, not 2, but 3. They have a common factor of 3, 
which is equal to negative 1 over 2. So that's our slope. Our slope is negative 1 over 2. On our third example, they didn't label these points, but as you can see here, we have this point there. We'll call that point A. And now we have another point right there. We'll call that point B. And we want to again get the rise over the run. So from point A to point B, I first draw a vertical line. So I'm going up and that's one, two, three, four. So I have a positive four rise. And to the right, that would be a positive direction. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So a positive seven. So the slope of the line, which is again the rise over the run, is equal to the ratio of four divided by seven. And since this cannot be simplified, they do not have a common factor. My answer will stay as 4 over 7. Now let's look at examples where we're not given a graph and instead we're given a point or two points that make up the line. So very similarly, like these two points where we have an x and y coordinates, we're going to be actually provided what those x and y coordinates are. And we're going to identify the slope of the line by using again the change in y divided by the change in x, which means that we're doing this operation. We're subtracting the second y by the first y and the second x by the first x. Now usually what I tell my Algebra 1 students is to make themselves a little t-chart just so they could organize their x and y values. It's similar to just doing this. But I like the I like the T chart because then I can just simply do this, the following, and it makes more sense for me visually, at least it gives me an idea visually, that this is how I'm subtracting these sets. Since my Y2 value is negative seven and my Y1 value is negative three, I know I'm gonna subtract those two numbers in that order in the same way here. I'm gonna subtract the second set from the first set, so I'm subtracting upwards. So the slope of the line would be negative 7 minus negative 3 divided by negative 6 minus negative 11. And negative 7 minus negative 3 is equal to negative 4. And negative 6 minus negative 11 is equal to positive 5. And since this does not reduce, they do not have a common factor. That is the slope of my line. My line is negative 4 over 5 which I could have just simply left it like that, but I like to put the negative sign in the middle right there, indicating that the whole fraction is negative. So let's do another example. So in the next example, same situation, we wanna find the slope of the line. So we're gonna get the change in Y and divided by the change in X, which means Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. So with my t-charts, again, that simply means I'm subtracting, again, upwards. And as you see, my second y, my first y, so negative 1 minus 5. My second x, my first x, so 6 minus negative 2. So negative five minus uh, negative one minus five is equal to negative six, and six minus negative two is equal to positive two. They this does have a common factor. They both can be divided by two. And reducing and dividing both of the the numerator and the denominator by two, we end up with negative still. But three over two. So that's our slope. And uh, example number two, a little bit more of the same stuff. So we're going to subtract the y. So y2 minus y1. 
let me label them I'm not going to do the t-chart on this example I'm just going to simply label them since you got uh, since I've shown you again the previous two is the same concept and we're going to do 9 minus 9 well 2 minus negative 4 that's equal to 6 and 9 minus 9 is equal to 0 well this is not possible to do 6 divided by 0 cannot be done so this is going to be an example where our slope is undefined now even though we're not graphing this what this means is that our line has a is a vertical line slopes that were where the slope is equal to an undefined value which is what happens when we divide by zero any number not just six but any number divided by zero is always going to be classified as undefined and the way that this line is going to look if I draw myself my y-axis and my x-axis the way that a line with an undefined slope looks like it's simply going to be some type of vertical line and for this one particularly, it's going to be a vertical line that goes through the points of 9, 2, and 9, negative 4. So the line will look like that. And for number 7, again, using the same formula as before, let me just label my x1, y1, x2, y2. I would subtract the y2 minus the y1, which is negative 3 minus negative 3, and the x2 minus the x1. Negative 3 minus negative 3 is equal to 0, and 0 minus negative 7 is equal to 7. Now, with the 0 now on top, and 0 being divided by 7 or 8 or any number, that answer is always going to be 0. So the slope of this line is equal to zero and well what does that mean in terms of what the line looks like and again even if we are not really focusing on drawing the line in this lesson just to give you an idea of what that means is that if we have a line where our slope is equal to zero we then have something that's perpendicular to this example here to the previous one so here we ended up with a vertical line here we're going to end up with something perpendicular to that is this is now going to be horizontal and particularly this thing is going to go through the following two points. It's going to go through zero, negative 7, negative 3, and it's going to look like this. And there's going to be a point where x is negative 7 and the y value is negative 3. And then there's going to be another point where x is equal to 0 and the y value is equal to negative 3. That point right there and that point right there. And because, again, there is no rise, notice, again, these are things are horizontal. They're, again, at the same height. There is no rise. So if I write this over 1, our rise is 0. So we don't go up or down any direction, but we do run to the right one unit. And if I keep on following that pattern, keep on running to the right one unit, eventually I will end up from this point to that point right there and thus creating a horizontal line. Well, that concludes the end of this lesson. Again, the, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope this was very helpful.